Yeah. What's up, what's good? What's problems? Crash Crash Labels, really good news. It's your man Theo Bowler, and welcome to another exciting episode. I ain't saying I'm just saying with a rock with Y'all go ahead and clap that damn thing on up. Yes, sir. <laughs> what's going on? What's going on? Thank y'all so much for joining me uh, in regards to this. Y'all see what we got? You see it. Uncanny Avengers number five. Yes, this is a Fall of the Mutants tie in. Yes, it is. Without further ado, y'all know how we get down, though. Before we begin, like. Share, subscribe. You like, leave a comment. You don't like, leave a constructive comment. All right, now we can get into the creative team. Yeah, we got Gary Dugan as the writer. Jerry Dugan as the writer. Javier Garon as the artist. Maury Hollowell as the color artist. VCs Travis Lanham as the letter, letterer. Tom Mueller and Jay Bowen at, on the design. And Javier Garon and Maury Hollowell as the cover artist. Thank y'all so much. Appreciate it. Good look. Good look. Good. We go back 10 weeks ago where Dr. Stasis is being corrected by Hydra Cap not to call him Steve. This combo right here should have told the good doctor there was going to be a problem. Should have been at some point. Yep. Fast forward to Hydra Cap seemingly having Cap at his mercy and Deadpool Wade Wilson to the rescue. Not for nothing, but did Wade just bite through his armor? No, no, for real. Did, did Wade just bite through with his teeth? Krakoan armor? I got a question. <laughs> <laughs> As Sala cuts through his arm cannon, she tells the team he can't be beat as long as he has on the armor. Wade just bit through it, though. <laughs> <laughs> I got a question. About the durability to said armor, like you say, he can't be beat while he got it on, but Wade just anyway. As he punches her away for all her trouble, Monet rips away at the back of the armor only to receive a headbutt. I'm just gonna say, I didn't steal Stevel, Stevel, that's what he wants, Stevel. Um, wear the suit, cut Deadpool in half after throwing it. So when he comes down with the shield, John Walker style on Monet, I'm thinking it's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> we saw this, right? We saw this live action. Right? Okay, well, nope. That ain't going to happen, which makes me question just how strong is T'Challa and grandchildren? I'm like, Theo, what you mean? Because his shield, cap shield, Vibranium, adamantium, Uru, right. T'Challa and Aurora grandchildren just put a whole flat screen through a wall made out of vibranium adamant. I got <laughs> <Yeah>. Nevertheless, <laughs> this next series of events is something straight out of an old school Bugs Bunny cartoon. Cap picks up Wade's upper torso. He uses it as a shield. Both defensively and offensively. See, see, Wade is 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 still alive, you know, healing fact and all. So after he uses the Deadpool shield as a shield, he then uses it as a weapon by throwing it at Steve and 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 Deadpool is raking like. You see what he's doing. Like, that's a shield. <laughs> Momentary distractions allows Cap to do to him what he did to Cap earlier. That looked like it hurt. It did. Like it hurt. Did y'all forget about the bomb at Empire State University? I, I did. I did. You know, that bomb that can only be stopped by Steve's retinal scan, which means Steve can... Stop it with his retinal scan, except, of course, it's a bomb. It's, it's, it, it, it's a bomb. So, Rogue and Cap converse about the bomb, detonate. She done already made her choice. She leaving her last words for Gambit. Still love him. Oh. That's going to be a powerful offspring as well. 
Understanding the severity of the situation, Cap notifies local authorities to expect the worst and notices that Pietro has raced off with Wade. I'm guessing he knows the plan because he simply wishes them good luck. This right here, this, this ish right here, this is this right here, this ish right here, this, this right here, this ish right here, this, 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 let me tell you how fast Pietro is. We don't even see him pin way down. <laughs> <laughs> we do see his skeleton grab robes hand. His, his healing factor, that's something to behold. You, you see this? And as he enrolled Hill up while watching a nuclear explosion, like they watching the sunrise or the sunset, like that's what they're doing. <laughs> they make small talk. Like, what, what are y'all talking about? Back at the Daily Bugle, we see a battered and beaten Steedil. Steedil. Leaking all over Ben Urich's desk. He leaked. They, they put it on. They put it. Outside, Whisk Wilson Fisk, a.k.a. the Kingpin, lets it be known to the public that the mutants were framed. That's when we get what amounts to a PR letter from Orcus Human Resources. Y'all read that? Y'all see that? Y'all want me to read it? I mean, I, I can. I don't know why, why you want me to. You, you, you see it, though, right? I mean, if you... If you want me to read it, I will. I just don't. I'm not gonna do no funny voice. I'm not. I don't need to read it. Okay, go go, go back. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to that story. Next day, we see the Uncanny Avengers gather on a rooftop overlooking a courthouse. They are. Um, is Cap gonna be wearing that sleeve, super soldier sleeve, permanently? Great job leaving it on to finish the story. I'm just pointing that out. Uh, anyway, outside the courthouse, civilians are, I'm guessing, verbally and physically disagreeing about whether or not Oak Orcus framed the mutants. Some of them probably don't care. Probably felt like the mutants had to come at you. That's when we get Hydra Cap. That's who he is, Steve Hill, Hydra Cap. Emerging from the courthouse dressed in all white. And did that officer just say what amounts to hell Hydra? He gives his speech, Stevel, about his version of the world, which includes all heroes being locked up. He envisions a mutant the deletion camp. I got to call it deletion camp. And did he just say, man loves mutant kills? You know, some people in my age group, y'all see that? See the picture? Because I didn't, I didn't heard that before. 1982, William Stryker, Marvel graphic novel, number five, issue five, X-Men, God loves, man kills. Yeah, I, crazy. Making his grand speech, Steveville rejects the American flag and renames himself Flag Smasher, where he suddenly greeted with a cup of coffee from none other than Deadpool himself. <laughs> That's, that's justice, considering what happened to Cap earlier. Rogue feeling Cap's pain basically asks him, is he okay? And honestly, I agree with Cap's take. This part, as well as this one. So yeah, that's it, though. Never the end. It says never the end. Oh, um, wow. That's it. That is the final issue of Uncanny Avengers. That's it, number five. Um, I will probably keep it up for about a week. Going to put it in the series and everything like that. Do have Avengers issues one through four. So we're going to make it do what it do. If you liked Uncanny Avengers, definitely got the action figures up there. I can take them down. That's crazy. This, well, I guess we might as well get used to it. Oh, um, Let's go ahead and take a look on up here. And uh, let's flip it around and it's the Uncanny Avengers around here. That's them. Let's get a good look at them. That's them. 
we going to have to pull them down. That's that's wild. As I was saying. <laughs> but, 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 the series is over with, so we got to pull the action figures down. Um, so, yeah, we're going to make it do what it do. We going to... We already got Green Lantern War Journal up there. What might we be putting up there to take once we take down the Uncanny Avengers? We shall see. In the meantime, in between time, click, like, share, subscribe. I ain't saying I'm just saying. Peace.